You know, a funny story about, uh, you know, we when Wild Dogs, we uh, recorded the first album kind of like without any, nothing in our minds, nothing, no guidance, no vision, nothing. And uh, then we got reviews and we got uh, offered to do a second album and we were coming up with songs and everybody was trying to be something that we were not, you know. Uh, Jeff wanted us to be a pop band because he thought if you play the right music, you'll get a right kind of record deal. But it doesn't work that way. You have to have integrity, and that means sticking to your guns. In fact, I wrote a song called Six Your Guns about that. And uh, another song that I proposed to do on the Man's Best Friend album was a cover of my favorite band, Motorhead. And it was going to be a cover of Ace of Spades, which the album was not that old. It was it was kind of new. It, the album came out just a few years before that. I saw them in the uh, San Francisco Old Waldorf with Mick Zane and Kip Doran. We went down. To, uh, he, we were at Kip's house, and we went down to the city and saw them. And Motorhead just blew my mind. I liked them from 1978 when. Tom Pig uh, turned me on to the band Motorhead. Anyway, the guy said, I said, let's do Ace of Spades by Motorhead. And they all laughed and said, no, that sucks. That band sucks. They're horrible. And they wouldn't do it. And so what I did was I went home, <laughs> sneaky me, went right home. I wrote a song almost identical to Ace of Spades. I brought that to the practice the next day because we practiced four times a week, which was really songwriting. It was like a songwriting club to begin with, where we get together and then we flesh out the song. And I came up with this idea, and I didn't. They were not believing in me. They did, I, didn't, I think they lost faith in me, or they were jealous. I was quite a spectacle on stage then, <laughs> and I'm quite proud of that because people say that now. And so I showed them a song. It was, I said, I got this great song. And if you listen to it, I'm going to sing to it in just a moment. <clears throat> it's almost identical, but they loved it. I said, that's a great song. And we came up with an arrangement. And I never told them. And that, that told me something, that they didn't know what Motorhead really was all about. I mean, who doesn't know Ace of Spades if they're into heavy metal? Back then, if you were a punk rocker, you knew about Motorhead. Not in 1982, 83, really. And uh, so I never told them I did that, ever. I still haven't to this day. I think that's, I told Lemmy that. And he had a big laugh. He hates the song. <laughs> He said, you had to pick that one. And uh, I was playing his bass, yeah, at a sound check. I was playing Lemmy's bass when uh, we interviewed him the first time in 1999. And we we're talking about basses, and he had his new signature, Rickenbacker, Kilmeister. And he said, let's go upstairs at the Roseland Theater. And he said, let's go upstairs and plug it in. So... He plays womp, 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 and does, makes a few adjustments, and then hands me his bass, which I didn't expect at all. You know, whoa. So I, my camera was put away, so I wish I would have got somebody to hold the damn camera while I'm playing Lemmy's bass to his amp, which that, that sound I heard in San Francisco at the old Waldorf, I was totally sober. No beer, nothing, but the sound got me high. I felt completely wasted after that show from the sound. And it didn't hurt your ears. It was just loud as hell. And it penetrated your cells. And uh, anyway, this is that song, I Want You to Believe in Me. And I'll talk to you later. Later.